Boris Johnson and other world leaders fail to convince the US president to extend his Afghanistan exit deadline. And reports tonight that some American troops are already leaving, also on News at 10 tonight. Rezia Millerini. Good evening. In his first speech in front of a global audience, President Biden, a month into the job, promised the United States would engage with Europe and consult with Europe. America is back, he said. Six months on, that commitment rings a little hollow. He did consult this afternoon online with the leaders of Britain, Germany, France and other G7 leaders, but flatly turned down their appeals to extend the American military pullout from Kabul's airport beyond next Tuesday. If he is twisting European arms, the Taliban is twisting his. Its spokesman said the United States must complete its evacuations by then. No extensions, they warned. Well, after that, the Prime Minister is hoping the Taliban will agree to allow safe passage for those who want to come out. Last well, things stand, this time next week, the military evacuation from Kabul airport will be ending. Today, planes have been taking off from there. Every 45 minutes, nearly 60,000 people have been flown out in the past 10 days. But those forced to stay put are facing up to what life under the Taliban will be like this time. While thousands wait fearful and frantic at Kabul airport, those who have left the mayhem behind know just how lucky they are to have been flown out. But some of the stories of escape are frightening and they in turn are frightened for those family and friends they've left behind. As one woman, a former mayor of her town, has been telling us after she arrived in Germany. Uh, well, let's now uh, talk to Rohit, who is... All right, Rohit, thank you. Shehab is also here. Um, the G7 is insisting on safe passage beyond August the 31st. It is slightly unclear at this point because of the last week, and several members of the government are saying that our involvement does not end on the 31st of August. There is a long-term pledge to help add the tools from Rohit there that the government thinks... Moving on to other news now, and one of the most high-profile missing persons investigations of the past decade. This afternoon, in a news conference held beside a gravel pit, North Yorkshire police said they were now searching the area in connection with the disappearance and suspected murder of the chef Claudia Lawrence a dozen years ago. She lived eight miles away. Well, the detective in charge said he couldn't yet say what had led them there, but underwater search teams were involved, and that search is likely to last a couple of weeks. Well, through the 18 months of the pandemic, Nicola Sturgeon has usually managed to stay a step ahead of the Westminster government today. Overall in the UK, there were nearly 31,000 new cases today and 174 deaths, the highest since mid-March. Rising cases are a threat for those who aren't protected by COVID vaccines due to a weakened immune response. But new research has found 60% of immune-compromised patients respond just as well as the rest of us. But for the rest, booster jabs may be the only way to ensure they can fight off a COVID infection. Now, in the most famous rock and roll group in the world, the Rolling Stones drummer Charlie Watts was an unlikely bandmate to his other flamboyant members. Today, his death was announced at the age of 80. He joined the group in 1963, but he'd already said he wouldn't be joining them on their next tour in the United States. His death has prompted tributes from a string of musical greats. Waving flags, smiles behind the masks. The Paralympics opened in Tokyo with as much colour and excitement as the organisers could manage in an empty stadium. They'll certainly be glad the Games are underway. Virus case rates in Tokyo are four or five times what they were when the Olympics began. Well, Paralympics GB have a medals target of between 100 and 140. And that is very roughly a medal for half the squad. And finally, it reads like a roll call of the world's greatest scientists, including Charles Darwin, Albert Einstein and Professor Stephen Hawking. To that list of winners of the world's oldest scientific award, the name of Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell has been added. She's been recognised by the Royal Society for discovering pulsars, burnt out stars. Well, Dame Jocelyn is only the second woman to win the medal. It takes and about time, don't you think? And um, that is it for News at 10 this Tuesday evening. Thank you for being with us. Good night.